What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, we're out here on Lake Okeechobee. On my last crappie video, I told y'all I would do another one and show you how to bring kids out here and do it. Today, it's just Kelly and I. We're out here to show you guys how you can come crappie fishing and do this yourself. You can do what you're about to watch us do in a kayak, a paddle board, a John boat, a ocean boat, any kind of boat you have that can get you out here, you can do this. In just a second, I'm gonna put these fish back on ice and I'm gonna show you how to rig these rods up and how you can come out and fill your cooler full of big Lake Okeechobee crappie. I was just getting ready to show you guys the rig that I'm using. And of course, somebody had to show up to the party and ruin everything. So let me put him on ice, which I already know. You know what? For good luck, watch this. We're throwing the first one loose because all he'll do is flip in that ice while I'm trying to tie the knot. All right, let's go. Let me show you all what we're doing. So I've got 30 pound braid. This is the exact rod that we caught the giant redfish on in my last video. And if you haven't checked it out, it's called the dumbest thing I've ever done to catch a fish. So I just cut the actual rig off that I used to catch that. That's what we caught it on. 30 pound test with just a pink jig head. Now I have just 12 pound test mono to a blood knot. I'm going to take these things, what we call bobber stoppers, just like that. And I'm going to put one on. They have little rings. You just slide the line through about an inch. Boop. Now it's on there. And you're going to see why I did that. Slide it up the line. You have to cut that little crimp that it creates when you put that on there. Take your bobber and make sure this is one that has a slit in it. You gotta first put these on. You run the line through it. Run the line through it. Then I put the line in my mouth and I actually put the bobber on. Just like so. just like so. Now it'll slide, but it won't slide past that bobber stopper. Take me a split shot. I used to use my teeth all the time, but now that I have pliers, I don't use my teeth. I like to use split shots because when I want to take it off, it's easy. You just take it off and you're not wasting it. You can use it again. Crimp it on about like that. Now I'm taking these mustads. These are what we use for crappie. They look huge. And I have noticed, you know, via Instagram, watching people ice fish for crappie and bluegills, they use tiny little itty bitty hooks. <clears throat> I don't know why, but here in Lake Okeechobee, we use big hooks. Tie just a regular knot. I always nip it off right at the hook. Now we have a minnow crappie rig ready. So I take the little minnow, I'll show you these minnows a little bit better in just a second. Hook him right through his lips real carefully so you don't tear it. And it's this easy. We're fishing. If I was kid fishing, I would have cane poles or, you know, some of those fiber optic, tele, uh, fiber optic cane poles. They sell them at all of the stores. Look at that, I got robbed. They sell them at all the stores out here in Lake Okeechobee at all the bait shops. But this rod is special. Kelly dug this out of her garage. She's also behind the camera. She said it's been in there for 20 years untouched. All right, so here's what the minnow looks like. And again, they sell all of the bait, the bobbers, the bobber stoppers, everything you need at any of the bait shops out here in Okeechobee. I myself go to the Fast Break Marathon. That's just where I shop. My buddy Chase owns it. It's American owned, American ran. But any one you want to go to, they sell them. And just like that. So I like to have my weight, I don't know, six inches. And I'm fishing about ah, two and a half foot deep. Let's put this one out over here. Both the bites we've had came from back here in the back in the open water, which is surprising to me. So we're going to get set up. And once we do, I'll talk a little bit more about what exactly we have going on. Oh, oh. We ain't all homeboy here. So for those of y'all that have been following me for a while, you know my little dog, Redneck. He hasn't been with us in a while, and he's been pretty upset about that. Now he's five and a half years old, and his whole life, I've always come out here jig fishing by myself, and it's just as fast as you can catch him, throwing him in the back of the boat. He will kill every single one of them stone cold dead, pick him up, throw him on ice. 
Look at this. Look at this concentration right now. <laughs> he is so mad right this second. Kelly, you got one right there. No, I was just joking. Jesus. All right, like I was saying before, let me get these rods out and we'll be right back. So by now I know a bunch of y'all are wondering how I put my trolling motor on in the water with this bar. ProDrive built me this specifically for me. That's the coolest thing about ProDrive is they will customize your boat to how you want it. So I come right behind the trolling motor, put this right back in the tube, put this pin right back in, and that's as good as done. Took me less than a minute. And I'm fishing. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's a short. He hit like he was 12 pounds though. Crappie here on Lake Okeechobee have to be 10 inches with their mouth closed to the tip of their tail, which is actually in a lot of lakes across the country pretty big. That one though gets to live to see another day. I'm actually, when we got here, the wind was not blowing at all. Now it's blowing dead out of the east, so I'm gonna turn my boat a little bit more sideways to the wind to where all of our bobbers are on one side of the boat. What do you have, a track star minnow on this green one right here? He's a chunker. I don't even know if he's considered a minnow. He's so big. More like a shiner? Yeah, it's like a baby shiner. Look at Redneck's concentration though. Getting ready. I'm trying to find that picture of me and this big old bass I caught when I was little and I feel like it was on this rod so I wanted to make sure before I say it. Are you sure Tyler didn't catch it and you, he just let you held it? No. Held it. Hold, Hold it? it. Hold my dad it. helped me because he's the one he's holding the line and then I'm holding the bass. <laughs> it's a pretty big bass. Yeah. Oh look at oh, you. What? What what species is that? I thought we were crappie fishing, Gabe. You put me on the catfish? No no no. I've only <laughs> caught crappie. You're catching catfish. <laughs> look at him, he's like No, Renick, you'll get hurt. He will jump in over a catfish. No, no, no. Here's this pliers are right here. Oh look at that. They say Danko on him. There we go. Yes. Oh, railed it in a little too much, but that's all right. Targeted the right species. First crappie for myself. How many did you catch? Two? One legal, one short? No, I've got two keepers in that cooler. You got two keepers? What? <laughs> well, is this one a keeper? You got to get that, that, uh, the measure out of that hatch. All right, so it looks like we just dropped the head right into this thing. And guess what? Sure. No fish sandwich for you. Goodbye. Dang, swam off mighty strong. So one of the most important things with any kind of fishery is where you decide to fish and how you decide that. You have bait, wind, current, cloud cover. Right now it's pretty sunny, but the sun's getting ready to set. So these fish, turn around Kelly, show right behind you. All that thick cover, the fish get up underneath during the middle of the day, the most lighted part of the day. In the evening they start coming out, shad start flipping, shad start getting around, minnows, and these fish will come out and start to feed and that's why we're positioned right where we are. I wanna be close to where they were at during the day and close to where they're going in the evening. I'm sort of right in the middle. All out here behind me is big cattails uh, alligator grass, Kissimmee grass, and it's just a fish haven. Right now, this time of the year, January, these crappie are coming in to spawn and also stage up to spawn. Some have already spawned and are getting ready to head back offshore. That's why we're positioned right where we're at. One of my biggest, most important pieces of advice I could give you is anywhere you decide to go fish, if you're a newbie in that area and you've never been, hire a guide. Kelly and I go with guides all the time. Even if it's only once, you gain so much local knowledge, what they use, what colors, because let's get real. You can't call a guy that runs charters and be like, bro, what you using? That's what that guy does for a living. He works his butt off to be able to provide for his family. And he's out there every single day figuring it out on his own. So it's not fair to call somebody, ask him on Instagram, what color. If you can and you can afford it, hire a guide. They will bring you out here. They will show you the area, the local knowledge. Now don't go right back to their hole. Don't go gar hole in their hole. This place is huge. 
Just inside of us, we got two boats jigging and one guy minnow fishing, so there's plenty of room for everybody. And if you need a guide, G3 Outfitters, all my crappie videos, you've seen me with him. He has guides that'll do minnow trips, guides that'll do jigging trips. If you have a little boat like what me and Kelly are in, my 18 foot pro drive or a canoe, come out here, a couple rods, get you a minnow bucket, get you some minnows, some weights, some bobbers, and come enjoy yourself like we are right now. And if you got a crazy little Jack Russell, bring him as well. You guys just enjoy life and have fun. I know COVID's devastating everything. It's making our whole world turn completely crazy. Just get out here and have fun. Whoa, you couldn't have planned that any better. But I got a big one. Kelly, you're gonna, I mean, look, see, I don't jack around, y'all. Look <laughs> at this big redneck, easy, easy. See, that's how you release a catfish and you don't have to get any slime on the boat, just like that. It did cost me a little gold hook, though. Anyhow, you guys, don't let what's going on in our world rule your world. Get out, have fun, be kind. If you wanna wear a mask, wear a mask social distance but still get out and enjoy nature in all of my videos you'll see me doing this you're like what is he doing that just picked my troll my power poles up now in this hand I have my remote to my trolling motor I can move this whole entire boat and never get up from this seat right here whether we're fish gigging bow fishing fishing like this snook fishing on the flats. If my kids are with me, I can get there in that back seat and run the boat where they're fishing just like in a grown adult. They're casting off the bow and I can do it from back there. So we fished this spot for probably 30 minutes, caught just a couple keepers, a couple shorts. And I've been eyeballing this spot right over here. So we're gonna move over there and power pole back down again. This trolling motor will move this boat though, watch this. Half the battle with fishing or hunting is figuring out your game or your prey or whatever you're after. I've been crappie fishing this lake now for like 25 years and it's always changing, it's always evolving. You have vegetation growing, vegetation dying, fish, you know, spots where fish come in and then they get overfished so they're not there anymore. It's a constant battle of keeping up with what's going on and that's with any kind of fish you're fishing. So always be open-minded. Look for birds diving, fish schooled up sometimes boats you know a, a group of boats means that there's fish there too but a lot of times there'll be one guy fishing another guy rides by and sees him well he stops now there's two and now all of a sudden people are just stopping because they see a group of boats well sometimes that doesn't mean anything pay more attention to currents and wind blown points and water clarity i promise you'll have more luck than following other groups of boats so i just picked up moved all the way over there came all the way back and kelly goes isn't this where we just were i said yes it is i got over there and didn't like it and i came back these fish i know right right at darker kind of start moving out from under this brush and get right around here because the other night me and my dad caught 40 on jigs right here so i'm hoping my gut instinct is correct and they'll be right here it's just kelly and i so we only need five or six for dinner at most i got a good feeling about this Take my mina, hook him right in the lip. Now I'm not gonna cast very far. I'm literally gonna just drop it straight down pretty much. Set my rod down just like this. And we put two more rods out. Oh, that felt nice. What's this? What's this? Look at how red that get. get. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys. I didn't even know I had her on. That's as big as they get right there. You, that's like a world record right there. That is Holy a smoke. mumbo jumbo. Wait, what? Hold on, let's measure that one. She's big, y'all, she's big. Look at that, big giant crappie. Let's see how big she is. GoPro stop before recording. Look at that. She won't even fit in the gauge. That's as big as they come. 
So anytime I put them in there, I try to take them, shove them in and under the ice. Always have your gauge, have you some good bait. Where's all my... Make sure all your bobbers are up. Have fun fishing. We're gonna eat good tonight, I know that. That's a huge one. Is that the I think biggest we need one? to just move right there to the edge. Just a little bit. Is that the biggest one you ever caught? Nah, I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna put my other jacket on. Uh oh. Uh oh, four pounder. Four pounder. Maybe only a pounder, but still. <laughs> One thing you'll never see us do is forget our frog tog. Because no matter what we're doing, look at your, film your bobber. Oh, oh, oh. Hand me the GoPro. Yeah. Babe, get your feet off my glass. <gasps> got him. He's a keeper. You got my one. first keeper, finally. <laughs> as your pants are halfway up your body. <laughs> All right. So as I was saying, you will never see us leave home without our frog dogs because like right now, it was super hot a minute ago and now it's getting really, really cold. So always keep you a good set of rain gear, some bibs and a jacket in your boat. That way if it ever gets cold and especially for your kids and frog dogs obviously are our favorite. I love them. They're half the price of some of their competitors. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. I'm actually so surprised how crappie taste so good. Like, I've seen everyone catch them, but I'm such like a saltwater girl. I'm like, how would you eat crappie? Like, I thought I was like a bluegill or something, but they're so good. <laughs> this time bad. of the evening, it will really get hectic. If the fish are here and you're around crappie, when the sun's starting to set, things can get out of control. Look at that. It landed in his mouth, Kelly Young. A short. Oh, ouch. He got me. But, babe, do I got a real man for you? This is the Zepco. Oh, Richard Harris and Georgia would be proud right now. All them South Georgia boys are proud of them Zepcos. Oh, he's bringing, oh no, is it? Oh, he just brought the other one down. Come on, boy. Woo! Ooh! This is a nice one. No, because it'll be even more tangled up then. Ooh. This is a monster. This is my this is my personal best crappie right here. <laughs> it looks like I need a nibble. Sorry, you can have a taste. Just because you haven't had a taste in a while. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. You got, oh, they're biting now. Uh oh. Oh, come on. Oh, are you getting cast in? I didn't get in this boat. This floating net right here is one of the most handy things you'll ever use, especially if you have kids. It ain't going anywhere. If your kids are like my son Luke, who love to dip net things, but also drop the dip net, Danko sells this floating dip net. <laughs> Trust me, it's worth the money. I have went through so many bait nets because of little Luke. But you know what, that's how I was raised with a dip net dip net and fun things so I can't be too hard on him if he loses one every now and then it's not like he means to do it that's why I was so thankful when I found this one now I don't have to worry about that I thought I had a big one on babe we're not keeping catfish today though if you wade fish for like um, sea trout and stuff, you can hook this on your belt and keep shrimp in there and it'll float right behind you. That's your tech tip of the week. All right, y'all, you've seen us catch four or five crappie. You've heard a lot of tips, you've heard a lot of comments, you've heard me do and talk about a lot more things than usual. 
But right now, the next time you see me, we're gonna be in my kitchen in Stewart, Florida, where I'm gonna teach her how to cook crappie, cracker style, South Florida style, eating them tails and them fins, and it's gonna be so good. Don't go anywhere, we'll see y'all back here. Actually, it'll be like a couple hours, but really, it's gonna be right now. What y'all think she weighs? Let's just go ahead and see. One thing I will say about crappie, now we call them speckled perch here in South Florida. Speckled perch, let's go speck fishing. Are the specks biting? Around the rest of the country, they call them crappie. 154, that's a pound, five four. Right at a pound and a half. I'd be willing to bet that most of the population would call this fish two pounds, two and, I caught me a two pounder. Look how big she is. She's girthy, full of row, and 14 inches long. She's not quite 14, 13 and three quarters. That is a huge crappie. Now that's a black crappie. I know around the country y'all have white crappie that get much bigger, but for a black crappie, that's a big one. So we're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. I know they have roe in them, so I'm gonna cook the roe for Miss Kelly Young behind the camera and these great tasting fins and backbones. This is just one of my cheapest Danko's. I love this knife. Just like so. A lot of people, and you heard me say this in my last video, use electric knives. I just personally don't like them for crappie. I used to do it with them. This fish is so fresh that its nerves are still kicking. Now, if I was cleaning a hundred of these bad boys, I would definitely be using an electric, but right now we only got about 15 and I'm only cleaning two of them for dinner tonight. Just like that. Flip it over and repeat. When I get done, I'm going to show you the row. Alright, so we have our two fish completely cleaned. Now, I want to see if I can't get this row out of here. Look at that. All right, this will work. This will work. This fish was so fat. Look at that. Dude, I'm sure Kelly right now is thinking, how did I get so lucky? <laughs> like, I mean, who wouldn't feel that way? But look at the fat inside that fish. All right, let's let some magic happen in the kitchen. Just a little bit of sea salt. We got a row our fins, a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt. Growing up, my mom in the kitchen, we had two seasonings. We had this one and the red Lowry's. I think it's a cactus dust. Look at that row. Nope. I think you could cook row in other ways. I just am not familiar with it. The only way I've ever cooked it is frying it. Kelly doesn't really like fried food, but the only way that I know to cook that row is frying it. So, that's how we're going to do it. This is going to be our appetizer though, look at this. Right now, I know there's a bunch of y'all that are saying, but can you smell it? So while that's going, I've got some mushrooms and onions, a little bit of garlic sauteing up in here. Kelly didn't want her fish fried, so I came up with something different. Gonna take. A little bit of Lowry's, not much. A little bit of sea salt. Crappie is such a mild fish, you don't have to do much to it. A little bit of pepper, put it on just like that. Got some gluten-free seasoned breadcrumbs. We're gonna take this right here. Kelly don't even know what I'm doing, she's just filming. Mm -hmm. Take these breadcrumbs. Just about like so. We're gonna slap this in the oven on convection bake at 360 degrees for about 10 minutes. So one thing I like to do when I'm frying fish is to get this drying rack out and I put it over a plate and let the fish air dry. If any of the grease wants to drip into the plate, it can. I don't like putting my fried fish straight on paper. Y'all already know that's gonna be good. Flip these one more time. I forgot, I need to fry my flakes. I don't want them baked, I want them fried. I might as well throw these in. 
Y'all will be right back after this commercial break. But can y'all smell that? This looks and smells so amazing. The rest we can just sprinkle right on top. One big chunk fell off, but you guys already know it's going to be good. Look at that. So we have pretty much cooked the entire fish minus the head. Got the flays, got the backbones with the fins, got some fried flays, and we got the eggs. One thing I haven't done in a long time before I allow Kelly Young to taste these eggs because she told me she's so excited is said the blessing. So let's say the blessing. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive us of our sins and just keep all of us safe through these crazy times. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to try it first because I, I do, seriously, I'm a bad boyfriend sometimes. I always make her try the crazy things. But this isn't that crazy. It's just eggs. I think it tastes better than the flakes. Did you see that whole thing? Yeah. My favorite thing in the whole wide world, though, is this. Mm. When you take that fin off, then you can... Pull that meat out right there. Mmm. Look at that. Man, that's good. Uh, hold on, let him look at the texture. It actually looks interesting. You know what it looks like? That, um... I don't know, it's like you find it in like the like kids' toy section. It's like, not moon sand, but like the slime with the little styrofoam balls in it. Oh, man. No, that was like what Luke does. Do you want to see it? Nope. <laughs> Look at you, he just did it. Big bite. <laughs> it, it, it does taste like scrambled eggs. Just less flavor, just kind of very plain. What? what? I'm good. <laughs> now you have to try this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Come on, get a big old bite. You have to at least bite halfway. Halfway? Halfway. I have a way. smaller mouth than you. Halfway. Just tastes like a chip. Just take you a good old fashioned it's... crappie bite. It's not bad. It's just weird. Like, are we supposed to be eating fins? Can I have the rest? That's all you, boo. All right, get you a fork and let's see what I cooked for you. <laughs> the grand finale. The grand finale. It's looking a little hot. I know it's steamy. I don't know if you can see it. Hmm. I don't see it up close. Crappie's so good. <laughs> It's so like light and flaky. And then with the onions and the mushroom and then this breadcrumb has like a Parmesan, like a Parmesan cheese like in it or flavoring to it and it's so good. Oh yeah, I'd order this at a restaurant. It's probably better than what you would get at most restaurants. Honestly, yeah. Man, when you go to restaurants and you order stuff and it's like too fancy and foo-foo and they put way too much sauces on it, it just ruins the dish. You want to bring out the flavor of what you're cooking. And I think a lot of people tend to put way too much stuff on it to try to make it taste better when in reality, you don't need a bunch of crap on your food. And that's your fun fact of the week. The cool thing about that fish is they're all over the country. They're all relatively easy to catch. I would say up north in some of the deeper lakes where they target them down on bush piles, they could be a little bit harder. But here on Lake Okeechobee, this time of the year, hire a guide or get on your boat and just go fish. Watch the beginning of this video. Watch how I rig that rig. Look at the vegetation that's around me and go do it. You might not catch any the first couple times you go, but if you keep trying, you will find them. But just know that the most important thing is the sun. 
If the sun's straight over your head and bright, they're going to be up underneath that cover. If it's overcast, rainy, and there's not much sun, they're going to move out to the edge or even out into the open water. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy all my videos. If you haven't checked out my last video that I'm in Sebastian Inlet with two redfish, it's called the dumbest thing, the dumbest thing I've ever do to catch a fish. Go check it out. I promise you won't be disappointed. But right now, we're going to finish this awesome, amazing fish. I'm going to eat the rest of that backbone. We're going to start editing, and tomorrow we're going to wake up and do it all over again just because of you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out Kelly Young's channel. And if you haven't, my girlfriend behind the camera has a channel called Kelly Young. Obviously, you're already watching Blue Gabe, so you know I have one. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. But like my oldest son Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.